Welcome to the update of macOS 14.2.1 on unsupported Macs and the KDK mess that it might create on your Mac. So what's all this about? If you're running macOS on an unsupported Mac, there are three basic rules that you just follow to not have an unwanted surprise. First rule, deactivate automatic updates. If your unsupported Mac does an automatic update, you might end up next day with a stuck progress bar, boot loop or any other problems whatsoever. Second rule, don't jump the updates. Just wait a little bit. For instance, for my video here that I can give you a thumbs up about your Mac and if it's safe to update what you should avoid or what you should additionally do to avoid problems. And that brings me to rule number three, subscribe my channel and click the bell for notification. And if you like to join my Discord server where we have more than 800 members already talking about the latest updates, the unsupported Mac versions and so on and that help each other. If you got a problem or a question, ask it there and there are 800 people willing to help. In the second part of the video, I'd like to talk about the KDK mess that I mentioned before. I don't want it to be too technical, okay? Just a quick explanation what might be. So you have the open core, two parts of that. The first is the open core bootloader that just tricks the unsupported Mac to install the newest macOS. Otherwise you get the circle with a slash and it says, okay, your Mac is not supported. You cannot install, for instance, macOS Sonoma. Second part is the open core legacy patcher because if you have tricked your old Mac with the newest macOS, Apple might have removed some drivers, for instance, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, graphic drivers, so that macOS cannot use your hardware in the way it should. And that is the second part, that are the root patches that just reintegrate the drivers into macOS so that your old hardware runs fine and have the appropriate drivers. But to install those root patches, we need the KDK, the kernel debug kit, which is an official software kit from Apple, just to be able to install those drivers. And you need the appropriate KDK version for your macOS version. Now, I will talk about that later in the video. And the good thing is, if you just follow me through the video at the end, I show you how you can get rid of gigabytes of just unused space on your hard disk on your old Mac when you can get rid of all the old KDKs and residue. So let's talk about the different Mac models and how they run with macOS Sonoma 14.2.1 and if there are any problems. I try to test every kind of method to update macOS. So either the USB method where you create a USB drive and install it from there and all the details you can find in my tutorial the easiest tutorial to install macOS Sonoma on unsupported Macs that also works for Ventura, for Monterey or for Big Sur. I also try the method where you can just go into the system settings and click update like with a supported Mac and I try obviously downloading the installer manually and install the update manually and that I try to do on all kinds of unsupported Macs representing the whole area up until to the iMac 2017 that is officially only up until Ventura and is the newest unsupported Mac. So as I said the iMac 2017 and for those of you who watch my channel regularly that is a new one that is my new MacBook Pro 2015. Um, then I have a MacBook Air 2013 and a MacBook Pro 2012. So these are the MacBooks and otherwise I do have the Mac Pro 2012 which a lot of you still use for audio production and the Mac Pro 2013. So that is a whole bunch of unsupported Macs. What I can tell you and that is the good news is that none of these Macs had problems updating from macOS Sonoma 14.2 to the latest version 14.2.1. But there wouldn't be everything fine without a but. The USB method 
where you just create a USB drive, plug it in and boot the installer from there on my MacBook Pro 2012, this ended in a stuck progress bar. Here in the video I talk in depth about that problem. Solution as described also in the video is easy. When you're in the open core boot selector just keep shift pressed to start it in safe mode. And then the boot bar, the progress bar just will continue and it will start 1%, 2% and whatever below the bar and then it just ran through and everything is working and the root patches were already applied. So that's the good news. On all other Macs, Mac OS Sonoma runs more or less flawlessly despite one little thing that you can also find in my older videos and that a lot of you know that is already since Ventura, the Mac Pro 2013 where you cannot upgrade the graphic cards, this one has problems with the transparency in maps. The Apple Map Kit requires for AMD graphic cards, and that are Fire Pro 3, 5 or 700 graphic cards, AVX2. That is an instruction set for Intel CPUs that started around 2013. So the MacBook Air 2013 already has it, the MacBook Pro 2012 not, but both Mac Pros, they have Xeon processors, they don't have AVX2. The oldest macOS that open core legacy patcher can handle is macOS Big Sur. If you like to install macOS Catalina or Mojave or High Sierra or whatever that is not supported on your Mac, just I give you the link down in the video description, use DOS Dude Ones patcher that just handles everything. It downloads the macOS version, it patches it, so you can just install it from a USB drive and just run an unsupported macOS older than Big Sur. Everything that starts with a 10 use DOS 2's patchers. And one more hint for the Mac Pro 2012, the old cheese grater. With every update you need a USB keyboard and mouse with a USB hub. Either you have an Apple keyboard that has the USB ports left and right, so that is an integrated hub, or you just use a regular USB to zero hub between the Mac Pro and the keyboard and the mouse because USB 2.0 doesn't work in the setup. Now let's talk about the KDK mess that I mentioned before. So as I already said, the root patch of the OpenCore Legacy patcher needs the appropriate KDK to install those patches. And the OpenCore Legacy patcher has an automatic background feature that it always checks if you are installing an update. And by the way, Mr. Macintosh has a great video explaining all the details and the features about this Open Core Legacy Patcher function. So I won't go into any details here. Just head over to his channel here on YouTube. There is a great explanation. As soon as Open Core Legacy Patcher detects you are running an update and that is either because you go into the system settings and you say update as with a supported Mac or you just downloaded the installer and start the installer manually, it will pop up and say, oh, I recognized you are installing an update. Let me prepare your Mac by installing the correct KDK. You will see that happen automatically during the install of an update. Obviously that doesn't happen when you do the USB method, but you don't need it anyway because during the USB method the root patches are automatically applied. With the latest update 14.2.1 of macOS, the OpenCore Legacy patcher now downloads and that is the kind of mess I, I meant. It downloads an older version of a KDK. Let me show you. So when you go to the releases page of the KDK support page of Dortania, and the link is down in the video description, you will see that there is, for instance, the latest 14.3 build that is for a beta version of 14.3. Then you have the build 23C64, that is the one that 
you should use for the official macOS 14.2. But for 14.2.1, it just downloads the debug kit 14.2, the build 23C5047E. So in comparison, that is a quite older KDK pack that it downloads for installing the root patch of macOS 14.2.1. And I was quite alert if that can bring problems to all the unsupported Macs and that is the reason why this video took a little longer. It doesn't make any difference. I didn't experience any crashes or boot loops or hangups. And I tested that on all other Macs. If you install the root patch with either of these versions, they should work. I didn't experience any problems. But there's one other thing and that is what I promised where you can get just rid of a lot of junk and free up some space on your hard disk. So if you go into your finder and you go up here to go to computer, you can see your hard disk and the network and maybe some more hard disks depending on your Mac model. You go to your hard disk, then you go to library, then you search for the folder developer. When you go into that folder, there's one folder KDKs and here you can see all the KDKs that have been installed onto your Mac. For instance, here on my Mac, from macOS 14.2, I do have the KDK 23C64 as an installed package and the folder that is the extracted installed KDK. Same is with 23C5047E, that is the KDK that the open core legacy patcher downloads if you apply a root patch now for macOS 14.2.1. Same with the folder where it's installed. And so if you start the open core legacy patcher and you start the post install root patch here all patches are already applied, but I will start root patching anyway. Start as root. You see down here, KDK already installed 14.2, 23C5047E, skipping. And it found that KDK because it said it found no direct match for 23C71. 2371 is macOS version 14.2.1. So as there is no appropriate KDK for that version released, it starts falling back to a near close KDK. And when it has internet, it uses 23C5047 echo and not 23C64 that was used with 14.2. Then we go back to the KDK folder. If you like to, you can just delete everything that is inside that folder, put it to trash. You have to enter your password for that. And if we now go, when you have internet connection, to install root patch, Yes, all patches applied. You just start root patching again. It now goes to the KDK database online. And as you can see, it starts downloading KDK 23C5047E. And so if you just get rid of all the KDKs or maybe just keep KDK 23C5047E if you already find it there, and I recommend keeping 23C64 as well, because that is the one for 14.2 and it's actually newer than this one. If you just keep those two KDK packages and folders, and you can get rid of all other KDKs that you found there, these were for older Mac versions, macOS versions, you can free a lot of space on your Mac. 
So I hope I could clear up some things and give you a good thumbs up for macOS version 14 2.1 on your unsupported Mac. Give me a comment below the video if there are any problems, any questions. Join the Discord server, link is also in the video description and ask your questions there or please share your experience there. 800 members already and growing so you could be part of that community helping each other with that unsupported max. If you'd like to donate to the developers of Open Core and Open Core Legacy Patcher, I would really appreciate that. Link is also down in the video description. They do have a homepage set up for that. So you can just uh, donate a little bit so they can just continue developing the Open Core Legacy Patcher for whatever macOS versions are there to come. And they can buy just new old hardware for testing and we can support that project. Thank you so much for watching. Um, check out my channel. And by the way, just a quick outlook. There will be one video what you can also do with very old Mac models and Mac hardware. For instance, you can install Chrome OS on Mac hardware. There's a video how you can just test it without altering your installation on your hard disk. It's just a live USB drive that you can plug in, boot from there and test it if you like. And another one will be all about the iMac 2017, about that fusion drive that the iMac has, like a small SSD and a large hard drive. If that connection is broken because macOS should only see that as one drive, I can give you a tips and tricks how you can restore the Fusion Drive of the iMac 2017. So there's a lot more to come. Don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate that. See you on Discord. See you here on YouTube. Have a nice rest of the year. Bye bye.